Our next speaker is Dr. Nathan Kerr, consultant at Eye Surgery Associates, and also one of the first surgeons, uh, one of the Australia's leading specialists in minimally invasive glaucoma surgery and cataract surgery. He's the co-editor of Mix.org and has been invited to teach mixed surgery in the United Kingdom, Switzerland, and France. So Dr. Kerr will be supporting the use of a subconjunctival mixed device in the context of medically uncontrolled moderate glaucoma. I look forward to hearing your talk, Nathan, and please start whenever you're ready. Wonderful. Thanks, Jalvin, for that very kind introduction. And thank you for the opportunity to talk at the session on hot topics in glaucoma. Uh, hopefully you can see my slides. I hope by the end of my talk to convince the audience that subconjunctival mixed devices are the procedure of choice for patients with medically uncontrolled moderate glaucoma. When we select a surgical procedure for a patient, it's important that we not only look at preventing vision loss, but take into account the entire patient experience. And for our patients with medically uncontrolled moderate glaucoma, subconjunctival filtration remains the gold standard in glaucoma surgery. And we're fortunate now to have multiple options, not only for conventional procedures such as trabeculectomy, but we now have new subconjunctival mixed devices such as the Zen and Preserflow. And it's important when we select our procedure that it's more than just choosing the procedure that gives the lowest IOP. We need to take into consideration the stage of glaucoma. While patients with advanced disease do need the various, very lowest IOPs uh, and the risks that come with achieving that, for patients with moderate glaucoma, a target pressure of 15 is often adequate. And for these patients, they need a balance between safety as well as effective IOP lowering. And so for these patients, we need to protect them from hypotony. We need to give them predictable IOP reduction with few post-operative interventions and a rapid post-operative recovery. Trabeculectomy effectively makes a fistula between the high pressure anterior chamber and the low pressure subconjunctival space, effectively acting like a flow resistor. And subconjunctival filtration is an extremely powerful way of lowering IOP because there is no episcleral floor. And in trabeculectomy, creating that resistance depends on many patient and surgeon factors, including the size of the sclerostomy, the shape, the thickness and the dimensions of the scleral flap, the elasticity of the patient's sclera, the tightness of our sutures and the resistance under the conjunctiva. And even in the most skilled hands, we can have overfiltration with hypotony, which can lead to potentially site-threatening complications, such as choroidal effusions, suprachoroidal hemorrhages and hypotony maculopathy. And complications are common after trabeculectomy. In fact, over one in three patients experiences some form of post-operative complication. And intensive post-operative management is required. Bleb manipulation is required in nearly 80% of routine trabeculectomies. And bleb morphology is not always ideal with trabeculectomy. We can end up with encysted or cystic blebs, leaking blebs, and nearly one in five patients need to return to theater after trabeculectomy. And even in uncomplicated cases, visual recovery is prolonged. In fact, vision can be blurred for weeks and sometimes even months after the procedure. Conditions which can affect vision include cataract formation, surgically induced astigmatism. And because of this invasiveness and these potential risks, we often perform glaucoma surgery too late. In a survey of European glaucoma specialists, they felt that in many cases, incisional glaucoma surgery was offered later than it should be. And a very telling survey was by Chang, who surveyed members of the American Glaucoma Society, and they asked them if they considered themselves to be the patient, what procedure would they choose in their own eyes? And 82.4% did not choose trabeculectomy as their preferred procedure. In fact, the majority selected a microinvasive procedure over traditional trabeculectomy. 
And so why did they do this? Well, mixed procedures give a less traumatic operation with a short surgical time, a fast post-operative recovery with a low rate of complications. And these features enable us to be more proactive in our care and offer surgery at an earlier stage of disease. And we're fortunate to have two very effective subconductival filtration mix devices. There's the Zen implant, which is a hydrophilic tube made of flexible porcine collagen, which is cross-linked with glutaraldehyde. It's made of a non-inflammatory collagen material and is tissue conforming. And its dimensions are very carefully selected based on the Hagen-Purcell equation to provide sufficient resistance to minimize the risk of hypotony and associated complications. It's the only subconjunctival MIGS device to be inserted via an ab internal approach via a single clear corneal incision. And that gives it a number of unique advantages. It's not necessary to open, dissect, and then later suture the conjunctiva. There's no need to create a scleral flap and no need to cut an iridectomy. And this means the procedure is less traumatic on the eye. It's a short procedure with a fast recovery and a low rate of complications with few post-operative visits. But it still leaves all potential surgical options open if needed in the future. It's indicated to reduce IOP in primary open angle glaucoma refractory to medical therapy, either as a standalone procedure or in combination with cataract surgery. It's been proven in a large prospective clinical trial of over 215 patients with moderate primary open angle glaucoma, and it delivered sustained reductions in IOP and medications with a mean pressure of 15.2 on 1.1 medications at 24 months. And while not as low as trabeculectomy, for our patients with moderate glaucoma, this is often a sufficient pressure reduction. It's versatile and it can be done both standalone or in conjunction with cataract surgery with very similar results between the two procedures. It's been compared against trabeculectomy in a prospect, uh, no, sorry, retrospective cohort study. And it was found to, that the Zen delivered a faster return to baseline visual acuity with fewer post-operative visits and fewer post-operative interventions, making it a more patient-friendly procedure. We now also have the Preserflow, which is another subconductival filtration device. It's placed ab externo, and it's also made of a very highly biocompatible material uh, called SIBS. It is a larger stent, but again, these dimensions are carefully selected to provide sufficient resistance to aqueous outflow to minimize hypotony, increasing safety. It's a longer device which helps create a posterior blib. And like Zen, there's no need to create a scleral flap or perform an iridectomy. Uh, it's 8.5 millimeters in length. It has a 350 micron external diameter, which allows it to be inserted via a minimally invasive scleral tract. It has a 70 micron internal lumen, which is designed to prevent hypotony, but also sufficiently large to prevent blockage. It has a distal tail to help create a posterior blib, and it has wings to help prevent migration of the device and leakage around the tube. It's made of a very biocompatible material called SIBS, which is soft and extremely flexible, ultra stable and biocompatible with proven safety. It has the same indications as Zen, and it's been uh, tested against the gold standard trabeculectomy in a large randomized controlled trial of over 500 patients, which were randomized three to one to receive either the Preserflow or have trabeculectomy. These patients had a, a severity from mild through to severe. And both procedures delivered uh, significant reductions in IOP and medications and again, while not as great a degree of IOP reduction, uh, pressures were in the mid-teens, which again is highly appropriate for patients with moderate glaucoma. Uh, a significant percentage of patients remained medication-free. And importantly, transient hypotony was less frequent in the Preserflow group and fewer post-operative interventions were required. 
the real world clinical results like Zen uh, are better than in the pivotal trial. And this likely represents improvements in surgical technique and optimal dose of mitomycin. Like Zen, the procedure can be performed either with cataract surgery or as a standalone procedure, and the results are very similar between the two. And there are now long-term results out to five years showing significant and sustained reductions in IOP uh, with a mean pressure of 12.4 at five years on a small number of medications with few long-term safety concerns. And so in conclusion, subconductival MIGS procedures provide a better choice for our patients with refractory moderate glaucoma. They provide a good balance of efficacy and a low rate of complications. They have a short surgical time, few post-operative visits, and rapid post-operative recovery. And this helps lower the threshold for intervention, and they have high patient and surgeon acceptance. Thank you.